Hello, this video is on finding the sustainable growth rate. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. So let's talk about what the sustainable growth rate is. It's the rate at which you can grow the assets of the firm based on maintaining the current debt to equity ratio and only using internal equity. In other words, we use our addition to retained earnings from inside the firm and the amount of debt, additional debt, necessary to maintain our constant debt to equity ratio. This is actually a fairly common goal to maintain the, the constant capital structure of the firm because after all, we theorize that for a given industry, there is an optimal mix of debt and equity that we should be using to trade off those expected costs of financial distress with the benefits, the tax benefits that debt can bring. So let's talk about how to calculate this thing. First of all, we abbreviate it SGR. And we have only two variables in the calculation of it, so it looks fairly simple. You're probably familiar with ROE, or return on equity, and we also have B. Now B goes by many names. Some people call it the retention ratio. Others call it the plowback ratio. Let's explain where those names come from. We're talking about the proportion of the firm's earnings that are retained at the firm. So retention ratio makes sense. But what about plowback ratio? This really only makes sense to farm people like me. Let me explain it to you. At the end of the harvest, the materials that are left in the field, which we might call stubble or other plant matter that is waste of, from the harvest, what we do is we plow that back into the ground and then it rots and provides nutrients that allow for the growth of the next crop. And so that's what we're doing here. We're plowing back cash into the firm to basically fertilize to create additional uh, goods in the future. So there are a couple of ways we can get to the plowback or retention ratio. The easiest one is to just take addition to retained earnings and divide by net income. So what we're really looking at is what is the proportion of the net income or accounting earnings that we are keeping inside the firm. Now we know that net income flows only to two places. Number one, addition to retained earnings, and number two, dividends. And so any money that doesn't flow out of the firm in terms of dividends is then part of the addition to retained earnings. And what that means is that the proportion of net income that is not paid out as dividends must be the retention ratio or plowback ratio. And so we could also take one minus the dividend payout ratio, which is dividends divided by net income. Now you need to be very careful when you read these problems because tricky finance professors like myself will often give you the dividend payout ratio. Let's say 0.4. Would you put 0.4 in for B? Absolutely not. You need to do 1 minus 0.4, which would give you 0.6. If you got lucky, your professor would give you a dividend payout ratio of 0.5 because they're both the same at that point. But of course, any finance professor that is worth his PhD would never do that. So let's talk about how we might calculate return on equity. Of course, return on equity is just net income divided by total equity. And if you're so fortunate as to be given that, those two things, then you could calculate it that way. But we try to make things more difficult for people and so oftentimes instead of giving you those plain ingredients we're going to give you other stuff that you need to use in order to get back to ROE. And one of those things could be the DuPont identity. We could give you information so that you could find the profit margin, total asset turnover, and the equity multiplier. Now what are these things? Well, profit margin is just net income divided by sales. Turnover is sales divided by total assets. And the equity multiplier is total assets divided by total equity. 
Note that your sales and total assets cancel, which just leaves you with ROE is equal to net income divided by total equity. So let's talk about a helpful relation here that will help you to be able to calculate some of these things. Sometimes you are given the debt to equity ratio and uh, you need to add one to that to get the equity multiplier. And that equity multiplier is what is used in the DuPont identity in order to be able to calculate ROE. So keep that one in mind. You may be looking at it saying, wait a minute, he didn't give me equity multiplier, he only gave me debt to equity. So here's how you handle that. Now let's take a look at the problem statement. First of all, the firm has, by the way, let's talk about how to read any finance uh, problem. Always start with the question. What is the fastest growth rate the firm can achieve using only internal equity and enough debt to maintain the current debt to equity ratio. What that's really asking for is a sustainable growth rate. And you say, why did you not just ask for the sustainable growth rate? And the answer is, we want you to know what the definition is. So instead of saying, what is the sustainable growth rate? We'll give you the definition. Now, moving back up here, we see the firm has a debt to equity ratio of 0.5. And as we just discussed, if we add one to that, we'll get the equity multiplier. During the year, the firm earned 10 million. Now, by the way, that is net income. And you have to be able to read that and understand what that is. Accounting earnings means net income. On sales of 100 million, and they paid out three million in common dividends and one million in preferred dividends. So how much did they pay out in total dividends? Four million. And we can start to ask ourselves, uh, what is going to be our retained earnings? Well, we've got a net income of 10 million and we paid out four million. Therefore, we must be retaining six million. The firm has 50 million in total assets. What is the fastest growth rate the firm can achieve using only internal equity and enough debt to maintain their current debt to equity ratio? So let's get to work. What is the first step? Let's find that ROE. Remember we said we could find it with profit margin times total asset turnover times the equity multiplier. They gave us net income and sales, so we're okay there. And we've got sales and total assets, so we've got total asset turnover. And then to find the equity multiplier, all we have to do is add one to that debt to equity ratio. This gives us 0.1 times two is 0.2 times 1.5 is 0 0.3. So our return on equity is 0.3 or 30%. Our next step is to find the plowback or retention ratio. Remember we said that the firm paid four million in dividends on 10 million in earnings. Dividend payout ratio is therefore 0.4. And so we know that our B is going to be 0.6 because we just take one minus the dividend payout ratio. Or we could calculate the addition to retained earnings of six million and divide it by the net income and get exactly the same number. So what is our third step here? Calculating the sustainable growth rate. So we've got ROE, we've got the plowback ratio, and that's really all that is in here. But there is a trick to doing this and doing it well on your calculator, and I will show that to you right now. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to start down here. 0.3 times 0.6 equals. That's 0.18 and I'm going to store one. And the reason I'm doing that is because this thing actually shows up twice and I don't want to do that again because I'm lazy. Now, I want to subtract this from one. The easiest way to do that is to hit the plus minus sign and then add one. 
And there we go, that is 0.82. The problem though is that basically this is one over 0.82. I wanna flop that thing up on top, and so I must invert it. And that's where this one over x key comes in. One over x, so that is one over 0.82. And then I'm gonna multiply it times, recall one, and that's going to give me 0.2195 or 21.95%. Now, if you're not as uh, handy with the 1 over x key as I am, here's another way you could do that. Recall 1, divide by, open parentheses, 1 minus, recall 1, close parentheses, equal, and you get exactly the same answer. I hope this helped you out. When you see these problems, don't freak out. Know that we have given you everything that you need to do in order to calculate the thing we're asking for. The only thing you really need to watch out for is if we give you additional information that you don't need because you may try to freak yourself out wondering where to put it.